everybody, welcome to this board game of life, episode number 63, titled The Best of 2023. I'm one of your fine host, hosts today. Uh, my name is Rob, and with me as always, I got my good buddy Mark. Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, this is Mark. <laughs> You caught me what? off guard. I've been bugging you. Are you ready? Are you paying attention? <clears throat> then I just got a text from my daughter. Needs me to do something. Well, that's how it goes. <laughs> oh, and it's like you're introducing me, and I'm sitting here going, "Oh, what? Do what for you?" So <laughs> I, I'm here, though. I'm ready to talk. Yes, excellent. So, yeah, so we can talk. And what do we talk about? We talk about gaming, board games, tabletop games, any kind of games uh, that we want to talk about. And anything else, I guess, although we don't delve into the anything else realm very often. But uh, yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about today, being that it's uh, the last show of 2023. And we're going to, you know, highlight some of the games that we really, really enjoyed this year in 2023. And um, here, I'll, I'll start off with what I've been playing first, unless you want to uh, go into anything before we get going. No, Good. I just, uh, the, well, I think the thing we need to say is when we do yeah. talk about our favorites, yeah, it's, it's our favorites. Cause like there's all these top 10 lists and best games ever and all that. These are our favorites that we've played this year. So doesn't mean that the game is brand new this year, mm-hmm. especially for me. This is basically my first year. Yeah. Because I got into what in November of last year, so all this is new to me. So just kind of keep that in mind, our listeners. Is you know, if I'm saying something, they're like, "How could that be on?" It's just because it's what we've played. And if I don't have like the new hotness on here, it's because well, I haven't played it. (laughs) I can only rate things that I've played. That's kind of the way I look at it. Exactly. Okay. All right. So. yeah, I only got like I got a couple of things, but the, the two the two main ones I want to talk about are Alhambra Roll and Write. So Alhambra is um, it's a game that's been out forever. I want to say it's a Spiel des Jahres game from way back when, like uh, many many moons ago, at least ten plus years um, that it was either a winner or one of the runners up or whatever it is, but um, this is a roll and write uh, version of it that's sort of ish like Alhambra, but not really. <laughs> so, but it does share a theme, I guess. So there is that. And um, uh, it's in a series, so it's from Queen Games. It's in a series of games that uh, they've roll and writeified uh, because they did Escape and. Oh man, what was the other one? There's Escape and then another one. Um, Helsinki or Copenhagen? What one? One of those two uh, is the other one. So the thing that I really like about this one is that it really reminds me of a game that I really, really liked, or like the mechanism in it called Targi where Targi, you would put these cards out in a grid, and then you moved pieces around the the grid of cards, and depending on where you stopped, you could choose like an action, let's, let's say, in a row or a column based off of the position of your piece. And with this game, you have a grid of buildings, I believe it's six by six, and you roll dice of two different colors, and you have, let's say, um, like blue and yellow, uh, one through six, you know, going left, right, up, down, and then you place your die, dice, on the particular spots, like you might roll, let's say, a blue six and a yellow three. So then where those intersect, you know, that's like the building that you get and you mark it off. There's just like, uh, you, you know, cross it out. There's just like score sheet that you have, the separate score sheet. But uh, eventually it gets to the point of where you roll like multiple dice and now you're choosing between different 
uh, locations, and it's just a fun little game. It's very quick. Um, the only funky thing about it is, and this is kind of like the annoying thing for me, is that um, you know the it's printed. I'll call very nicely. Right, uh, it's got these buildings. You know, it, they look like those buildings uh, from like Castles of Burgundy. You know, what I'm talking about. It's like the uh, three dimensional looking view, sort of like a okay. building. But it's they're printed like very nicely and dark. So when you're crossing things out, like if you use a pen or something, it's you know, it's like you have to like draw like a really thick line. You know, so it's like when you cross something out, it's like not as easy to see. I mean, you can see it, right? But it it's not like totally obvious to block out a square. Um, you know, like if if they were lighter, and then maybe if you had like a felt tip or something marker. But uh, that's a, that's a minor little gripe. But um, it's a cool little game. Um, I, I I really enjoy it. It's one of the better roll and writes. Um, that I've played this year. Not, not that I played a whole ton of them, but uh, I definitely like it a lot more. I, I really wonder if it has something to do with the Alhambra spin on it that I really like. Plus, I like Queen games in general. But um, but yeah, that, so that was a pretty good one. And then I played uh, Orianian Burger Canal. So this is an Uve game that I got a couple months ago that's just kind of been sitting idle. And with Orianian Burger Canal, it's, so it's interesting from the aspect of that it's it's a full-size game right so it's like ticket to ride size box but it's a one to two player game oh wow. um, <laughs> yeah and um but it, it's a fun little game where you get um i mean there's there's like no surprises to this one this is a fairly popular uh game when it came out and oh and i think i've mentioned I've mentioned Spielworks, I believe, haven't I? I believe Not so. Here? Yeah. So um, the uh, so it's a Spielworks game, and it's an Uwe Rosenberg game. And Spielworks has, for me, like a history of making some pretty darn good games, and they're like heavier Euro games. And in the past, they've always been like like you know they print like a thousand copies so it's like a big mad rush yeah. you know to get in it's like you know are they ever going to reprint it and you know it's like uh the guy that runs the the game company you know he's I, well he used to be like a one-man show i believe for um for a long time so um you know thankfully that's changed in recent years where it doesn't seem to be as much of a problem to get these games but uh, whenever it was i don't know kickstarter indiegogo whatever it was uh i backed the game and uh and got it when it released so yeah i have a little bit of fomo with their games still although yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be a little selective i mean they make some really solid games but you know not all the games are like up there i mean there are some that are okay but uh anyway i'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here <laughs> with that but uh you no know, yeah never. <laughs> but so Orianenberger burger canal the a couple interesting things about it if people aren't aware is that um, it has this oh, man i don't know what you would call it uh but it's like this disc with um like clock hands like think of it like in a 12 o'clock in a five o'clock position and then you use that to count how many resource goods you have of of the different kinds so the position to the left or to the right of the 12 o'clock hand is like you know how many spots you know going down in each direction is like uh how many of that resource you have so if it's right next to the 12 o'clock hand to just to the left of it that's one if it's in the second spot off of that then you have two so you know you don't have a million pieces right you're just moving your one piece to different positions to denote okay. how many 
quantity that you have. And then there's these like advanced goods that go on the other side. But uh, but the thing also is you can move those clock hands like in uh, like if you move them to the left at that point, you basically consume one of each good. Right. Because you now have one less of everything. And then the stuff on the advanced side, you now have one more of everything. But uh, but that's kind of an interesting mechanism. And uh, Uve's had this kind of stuff in uh, in previous games like Aura at Labora, which is uh which is another pretty darn good game. And then there's uh, another board that you have that's like a four by four grid where you put these little cards down. And what you're looking to do is to build um you know various like um things to surround the card so you might have like a waterway or um, there's like train tracks there's, there's a couple of different like i'll call it modes of transportation or services for transportation and then um, once you fully encompass a card then you get like its benefit and then you can also activate it a second time by building a bridge from card to card so it's it's kind of a cool little setup um and uh, you know it's it's a really solid Uve game. I don't know if it's for everybody because of the one to two player aspect of it, but um, but I, I think it's a pretty darn good game, and uh, I definitely enjoyed it. So that's about it. Uh, what have you played? Oh, I was able to get a couple of things to the table. I did get to play through Terraforming Mars, and. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to that game, but I really dug it, um, really enjoyed it. Um, and the, the guy who taught it in my group actually brought me a um, um, the expansion Prelude, which we played in his game when he was teaching it. And it's like some, they're just cards you can start out with. Um, I think it's like, if I recall, it was like two cards. I think you get dealt, everyone gets dealt some cards and you pick, I think, two mm-hmm. to give you these starting bonuses and stuff. And so um, <clears throat> he actually got that for me, which I was like, that's super cool. So I get to add that to my game. But um really did enjoy that game a lot. And I've only played, I played the dice game first. And um, so it helped me because the dice game, I think, is uh, probably a little easier to learn. Um but um, the terraforming Mars was a lot of fun, and having that play the dice game, I was okay. I, you know, a lot of it made sense and stuff. So it's just some additional mechanics and things to do, and had a really fun time with that. And really looking forward to playing that one again sometime. Um, did play some Super Mega Lucky Box. Um, I got to play a new game called, well, new to me, <coughs> called Skull King, and this one was actually. I'm I I have learned that I'm not really a fan of trick taking games and that's what this was. Sure. And I was with a different group of people um there these are a bunch of guys from my church that we got together to have a game night so we ended up with like eight of us and one of them brought this game and I was like oh trick taking. This one was actually a lot of fun. Um I did really enjoy Skull King. So but man there's it's like this beats that and this beats that and this beats everything except this card over here (laughs) which is like you had to have this cheat sheet in front of you to know what what beats what (laughs) but um it was a really fun game i actually liked it um played some more code names um i also got to teach that group seven wonders architects because none of them had played and it, it went off really well and they really liked it um, I played, um, some sky team, finally got a chance to get that out. Um, I hadn't played it since, uh, since I think, since I bought it at Gen Con and played it at Gen Con. I don't think I've played it since. I finally got that off the shelf and played, um, some more dice cards, some more ab- abduction, uh, played my shelfie again. Um, now my, my kids are home from college. So my daughter we, and I, um, played the Ticket to Ride Rails and Sales because she loves it. She destroyed me in that game. It was embarrassing. 
so bad. <laughs> nice. Oh. Um, I did play Castles of Burgundy, the special edition, a couple of times, like twice in the past two weeks. Very nice. Got to play with my game group. Um, and then I got to teach my two older kids. Um, and they both really enjoyed the game. They liked it. <clears throat> we, my group is continuing on our Dorf Romantic campaign and having a lot of fun and continuing to expand on that. Um, I got to play Trekking the National Parks, which was a simpler game, but I, I did enjoy it. It's fun. I do have Trekking the World, um, which I haven't played yet. They did last week or no, two weeks ago. I think they played it. Um, but I was uh, in, in another group. So they're like, can we borrow your game? I'm like, of course. Um, so we played Trekking the National Parks, which was fun. Um, long shot the dice game. I learned that one about betting on horses and uh, it's basically a, a roll and write. Um, <clears throat> and then um, for Christmas, um, Santa Claus brought the family Ticket to Ride Legacy of the West. And I have some very mixed things about this game to say. So right now we have played the, the campaign is 12 games total. You will play a total of 12 games to, to complete the campaign. And we have done three so far. Um, so after we played the very first game, as we're going through it, it's like, I think it was after the, yeah, it was after the first game, you open up a box. They're like, open up this box. And there's um, a ticket punch, an actual ticket punch, like a whole puncher that. You okay. Know. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like a real one in the game. And they're like, now you punch your, the, the destination cards to, for those destinations that were completed. And like I was like, conductor. what? And, I, and I'm like, exactly. And I'm just like, wait a minute. And the kids are about to start putting holes in my cards. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like looking and, and reading this and I was like, well, how am I ever going to play this again? And it's like, you're not. This game is no, not no. intended to be played through the campaign from a the second start. time. From the start. So you, well, you, from you the first 12. <laughs> no. So you. Okay. So let me just let me tell my story. OK. So I'm like, I'm like instantly like I'm really ticked off because this was an expensive yeah. game. I paid triple digits for this game. Okay. It was like $120. And I'm like the very first start of this game. They're having me physically destroy tickets. And then you put them. And then after you've some of them are after you punch them once they're retired, they're gone from the game. Some of them you can punch twice. By it, by, but it's it's by certain colors would have to punch it twice. So, so if the same player basically has punched it twice, that gets retired, and it does bring new things into the game. And and I understand it's like, well, you're you're playing a story because there's a story you're reading and things are going on as you continue this. But my point is, and where I'm like really kind of po'd about this, is that. I spent a lot of money on this game. Now, if, and I'm playing it with my family. Now, my gaming group probably would like to go through this. Well, we can't use my copy of the game. Because even when my kids in the next two weeks, they're going to go back to college. We are going to finish this. We got, what, nine more games we're going to play. Uh, we're going to get it done before we go, before they go back. And because we have to right at this point we have to otherwise i'm never gonna know um but the point is like oh then i could bring it i would like to bring it out to my game group and play a campaign with some some of the same people who would like to do that and i can't because the cards and stuff have been punched like you can't use them again yeah i guess unless you punch further into the card on that color line. Maybe there's a way I can figure it out, but it, it irritates me that you spend all this money for a campaign game that you can really use one time. 
because their point of this game is you play the campaign and then once you're done, then I guess you play it. I guess there's another way to play it more like a regular ticket to ride game, but it, it's still not going to work that way. Like, I guess I'll have to see what ends up, how this ends because supposedly in the the directions, once you're done with the campaign, that is it. It is over. And then you can replay like whatever the game ends up being at the end. That's what you can replay like a standard game of ticket to ride. Yeah. Then it's like a unique ish version but I, of the game based but on I should have the ability it. to play the campaign again if other people want to play it you I, know what I, I'm saying I, I know what you're saying <laughs> that's not how legacy games work <laughs> okay I guess this is my first legacy game because yeah. I'm like Dorf Romantic is a campaign game but it's not a legacy game and it and it builds on itself from game to game. Like we're playing my game group, we're playing this. And we're like, I think we've done we've done eleven or twelve games now, and we're we continue to add stuff. But when we finish, when we're all done, or we say, you know, we're done with this, everything can go back into its box. I can rip the sheet off the front and I got this, and then there's a brand new campaign sheet, and I can start with new people right at the beginning and mm-hmm. try to unlock all this stuff again. It's like the game is reusable. This one, Ticket to Ride Legacy of the West, is not. And then I I just, I have this like $120 and the first thing you do, you tell me to do is start putting holes in cards. Yes. Like that goes <laughs> against like everything of like, wait a minute, what about, what if I sleeved them? You know? <laughs> And obviously, you know, it's like this whole thing about taking care of your game and you just spent all this money on it. And the first thing they do is say punch holes in it. I, I, it, it really, dude, I'm serious. I was in a great mood and I, it, it just tanked my mood. So I was, I was upset. I was angry. My kids are kind of <laughs> like, it's like, it's no big deal. And I'm like, it's a huge deal. <laughs> Like, I'm Dad, like, give me that card. Let me rip it up for you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no. that's exactly. And I'm like, no, put that. Yeah, my daughter yeah. had the puncher in her hand and she was just playing with it. It's like, put it down. Stop. And like, I'm like, don't you dare. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm not punching anything. I was like, just put it down. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to find on BGG, like, is there a way, is there a recommendation, like, so that you can not ruin the game? but still track somehow. See, but it doesn't ruin the game. That's I, I know what you're saying. I, I totally know it what you're saying. It ruins the replayability of the game. I guess that's what I need to say. Yeah. I. It doesn't I, ruin the first run through it, but I, I may want to run through it again. So you got to get a new copy. <laughs> um, no, that's, go. Yeah. Family so, friendly show. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, I mean, so that is... That is a normal thing with legacy games. And there's a handful of them. Like there's a Risk one and a couple others. Um, is that what Pandemic Legacy yeah. is like? It's a one shot. It's not a one shot, but <laughs> with all of those go- games, you are changing the game as you play. Like I believe uh, one thing in like Risk Legacy is, you know, you can rename a country like Australia to Markville or, or something. And then from that point yeah. on, it's that, I mean, you, you actually like put a sticker, I believe, or something on oh, the yeah. board that, that changes yep. it. Um, there, as far as I know, there's only one game that's addressed the replayability thing. And it's a game called um, Charterstone from Stonemeyer Games. So okay. it's a legacy game and they sell like a refill, recharge, replay something kit um, where you basically replace it, this kit comes with all of the stuff that you modify in the game uh, during the game so that you can start from scratch. 
or start from the beginning. So that's the only one that I know that really does that. O- other games, you got to buy another copy. It's just, it's just, you know, it's an evolving experience. And then at the end of the campaign, you know, you have now a sort of unique copy of the game that's unique to you and your playthrough. But the, but the thing is with all of these, this is kind of going along the lines of like the gloom havens and stuff where, you know, if let's, let's say, let's say you play ticket to ride with your kids and then, you know, you don't get the last three games in. Like if somebody, if you get two other people to step in, you know, all of the stuff that happened isn't going to mean anything to them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, right. They, you gotta, they have, that's why I'm, I have to yeah. complete this with my kids. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, I mean, you don't have to, right. But I, I want to finish it. It's, it's not as meaningful to the other people. You know, they can jump in right. and play, but you know, they, they don't know why something is right. The way that it is. And then that's the whole purpose of the game where, you know, stuff changes the gameplay and you know it's um it's unique to you and meaningful and you know i'll air quote special to you but i know what you're saying though and i i could see like going into it and and having it be a surprise it would be like a rude awakening you know i can say I probably won't buy a legacy game. I've, I've learned a, a expensive lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the game. Like, yeah, I, I was enjoying it and I've enjoyed it since, even though it killed me dude to punch. I, that was just like, you know, like someone just shot my dog. Right. It was just like, yeah. dude, you're killing me. You know, um, I do like the game and it it's, it is fun. Um, and it is very different than all the other <laughs> tickets to the rides. Like okay, that's I won't good. buy the others anymore. It's, yeah. it's just, they're all basically the same. This is very different, Yeah. but I really thought I could play this more than once. And that's where I'm really struggling with the price of this thing to basically go through it once. Now, again, maybe my like mind will change when I complete yeah. it yeah. and get down to, okay, it's done here's the quote ticket to ride world or game that we have created and seeing how we can play that. Cause supposedly you can play that continually at that point, but there's so many things that are different in this game compared to the standard ticket to ride. It doesn't, it's not like, okay, well it's not, it can't function like a regular ticket to ride game. So what is it we're doing? Because how do you build all these things, make this world, if you will, and then how how do other people play that? Because they haven't, they weren't there to create this thing. So I, I will by our next show. I basically will have to have it done because let's see. I think my daughter will be gone by the next time. Oh yeah, she leaves next week, the end of next yeah. week. So by time our next show is, oh, and my son, oh. Yeah, he leaves two weeks from today. So we'll be done by the next episode. So I can tell you uh, how my thoughts are yeah. um, uh, so, at the end game. So what you're saying is we need to get through our list fast so you can play your fourth game. Yes, <laughs> but not tonight because the kids are all gone. Yeah. So, But uh, anyways, I, I had to talk about that for a moment. Oh, yeah. No, it's I, I get it. It's a rude awakening. Um, for sure. Yeah. And then um, I did play, I got a Kickstarter in called What's That One? It's a kind of a party trivia game. And then um, I got Sagani um, Uwe Rosenberg game that my son got me for Christmas. I got to play this a few weeks back in one of my gaming yeah. groups and fell in love with the game. And so we, I got it on Christmas Day and we played it on Christmas Day. And, um, I like want to play it again. I'm ready to play it again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, but um, that's, those are the games I've played the last two weeks. It's been a lot. I've, I've been really lucky and blessed to have just an, a very active game group that we play a lot of different things. And my kids are home. So I've got a lot more games in with them. 
So it's it's been a fun two weeks. Now, I think the last time we spoke, I told you that I was looking at my like stats in my BG stats app. Yes. And I realized I was like, oh, my goodness, I've had so many game plays in this in the year 2023 that I'm like, I might make averaging one game a day. And I have exceeded that and surpassed that goal. Um, so, so far as of today, so I got a, what, five days left, four days left. Um, I have played 372 different plays, not 372 games. I've had 372 plays in 2023 so far. Um, so it's averaging 1.01 per day. And that's 141 different games that I have played so far this year. And I'm just like, wow, I've played 141 different board games. So I'm really yeah. excited by that. It has been a crazy fun year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've experienced and learned a lot. That's a ton of games, dude. Yeah, a couple two tree. <laughs> yeah, a couple two tree. Mm-hmm. So, but that's that's it. So, well, okay. I'll, I'll on the next on the next show, I'll let you know where I ended on the year. Okay. So, yeah, but, we'll, we'll know that it, it'll at least be nine more because you're taking the ride. <laughs> yes, it has to be at least nine. More. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything else, <laughs> and so then you're... oh, my oldest. Son got a yeah. got his own copy of Catan, and nice. because his, his younger brother gave it to him, and my oldest son loves that game, and he's going to take it to, with him to college. And he just looked at me and he's like, "Hoo hoo, time for a rematch!" And I was like, "Nope, I beat you the one time we played. <laughs> I'm not yeah. playing you again because <laughs> he is good." And I really, I think it was he was oh, teaching, bet. and that's why he didn't live up to his normal kicking everybody's butt. So. But I might, I might have to play them if we can get our ticket to ride done first. Then I'll be like, okay, I'll I'll play one. Okay, so then, so then, uh, then you'll get up to at least three hundred eighty-two with your nine ticket to ride and your one Catan. There you go. <laughs> so oh, I mean, I got I got game night tomorrow at, with my well, group. Yeah. So I was, I was so saying that's we'll, the minimum. <laughs> so now it's like, can I hit four <laughs> hundred? There you go. I don't think that's going to happen unless I do a, a lot of solo gaming, but in the next just, week. Just, but. just think about it. It's the gamification of games. Yeah, because I've already thought, well, if I've done this this year, then I got to bump my goals for next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be tough. <laughs> or or don't just totally knock it out of the park this year because then, then you'll struggle next year unless exactly. you play like uh, like five-minute games. I played 400 games of war today. <laughs> yeah. Or I'll spider find some there. <laughs> five. Yeah. So, oh, I, yeah. yeah. I don't even count those. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't even count. count that stuff. So yeah. if I, if I had to count solitaire on my iPad, I'm sure I could probably triple this number. <laughs> yeah. Cause I play it every day in bed, laying in bed, <laughs> yeah. but I count just, these are just board games. So, and I do count yeah. the BGA. Because I'm I'm playing like against you, yeah. You, know, I, you and I are playing I, a game, I, I and I, I do count that. Count. Yeah. <clears throat> but I we've only had what three three or four games this year yeah, that I think we've we played. So we got to yeah, step that up. That'll be my goal next year we to do. make you play more games on BGA with me. There you go. I'm I'm up for it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Actually, on uh, I just started a new mobile game that's a huge time sink. I don't know. I sort of like it, but I don't know. It's like an idle game, sort of, but it's also a tappy game. It wants you to tap on all this different stuff, and I can't decide if I like it or not because (laughs) I'm compelled to play it, but I'm like laying in bed, and I'm like, I'm so tired, but I need to finish this one thing, and it's like never (laughs) ending. It just does not end. And uh, it's called Super Snail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where you're a snail that got sent back in time to save the world. <laughs> nice. But, 
yeah, it's it's a free game as far as I know. Well, it's free on Android. I believe it's free on iOS. So I'm, I am, and I'm not recommending it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, all right, let's let's get on with our lists here. All right. So, so uh, we each compiled a list of uh, top games of 2023, and um, um, so you said that your list is pretty much stuff that you played this year. It's mine, all yeah. stuff that I played. Yes. Yeah, mine. I tried to keep most of it as 2023 releases, but. Okay. It is what it is. It's it's our show. It's our list. We do what we want. Darn Skippy. Exactly. <laughs> so um, you want to you want to just go like uh, each name off? Um, yeah, we can just go our, back our numbers. Forth. Yeah, because I, we... I know you're. You said you didn't have yours in any specific order. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to read did... it in in sort of an order. Okay, and. I'm going to give mine from like 10 to one. Yeah. Leaving my I'll, I'll favorite for last. Okay. Mm-hmm. But like, so, like Rob and I were talking before the show, like this, I, fo- I found really hard to do. Oh yeah. Because some of them, like I might have more plays on something that's lower than something higher, but it's just because you can't get it to the table as often for whatever reasons or number of players or just various things. But it's like, I love every single one of these games in this list. And it was like, I think outside my number one, it it, it was really hard. It's like, I'd I'd pick one for one and everything else would be like a two tied for second place. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, it is what it's a nine way tie. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) No, actually, I'd probably have a three-way tie for first and a seven-way tie for second. Yeah. So. Okay. Do you want to start? Yeah, you know, I'll start off. Um, so with, with my number 10, and this one really surprised me because I never, ever, 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 ever thought I would ever have this style game on any list. Well, I would have a, <laughs> on a garbage list, but uh, Uno Ultimate. <laughs> so <laughs> Uno <laughs> Ultimate is, um, uh, uh, I don't know what, what you would call it. So it's a variation of Uno, of course, and there's so many so many uno games and this is like i would say the only one that's worth playing and um it's just it's just fun surprisingly fun i went into it what what worth playing rob did i lose you no i'm still here oh i you went dark okay do you still hear me now i hear you now but you i got no recording of you yeah, it the last I heard was there were so many. The last thing yeah, I heard was there's so, so many, many versions. So many versions of Uno. It is like ridiculous. And uh, this is the first one, and I, I played a whole bunch of them. Um, that's what happens when you got, you know, kids around. And um, it's the first one that actually like really surprised me because I, when uh, when I first played it, I was kind of like, oh shoot me now it's another (laughs) uno game but it's an uno game that is um ultimate (laughs) (laughs) it so what it is is uh it comes with four decks of cards uh they're all there's two versions of the game there's a marvel and uh dc so for example the marvel one comes with iron man thor captain marvel and uh, Black Panther, and I forgot who the other ones have because I have the Marvel one. And then you can buy individual packs like Spider Man, Miles Morales, and a bunch of others. And um, uh, they also have collectible foil cards uh, that uh, you open to make it just a little more interesting, right? To get the the fancy cards. But the best way I can describe this is it's um 
one of the legendary games like Marvel Legendary, where you know it's a deck building game. You are working with your other players to defeat the bad guy. Like Marvel Legendary had like Red Skull. You were all fighting against Red Skull and trying to beat him. And it wasn't easy. Well, at least that wasn't an easy game. And this is kind of the same thing. It has totally the 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 feel of the legendary games in such a small little compact form factor you don't have this huge box you just have a couple of decks of cards and you do have you know your typical um you know some of your typical uno um uh, abilities that you use just enough to make it interesting but it, it's a fun game. Like I said, you, you're working to uh, defeat the enemy and there's event cards that come out. And it was just, it was a real surprise. And uh, I actually don't have a problem ever playing this game. You know, think of like a light, you know, fun game. Most people can pick it up and, uh, you know, play this and then play, you know, something you know, meteor afterwards, but uh, yeah, that's my number ten. Um, Uno Ultimate. I've I've got this game and I've yet to to play it. I've tried a couple times to like watch a like a playthrough or read the directions, and for some reason, this thing just confuses me. Like, yeah, you got to play. It, I'm like, it's fine. I that's what I probably need to do. Just sit down, mm-hmm. get the directions in front of me, and just play. And then it'll probably make complete sense. But Mm -hmm. um, I know you've raved about it so much. It's like I had to pick up a copy. So, (laughs) yeah, don't um, don't get me wrong. It's not like the most amazing game out there, but it's it's nice. It's it's a decent game. Yeah. All right. Um, So for me, uh, my number 10 is um, I went with a game that I was lucky enough to get early at Gen Con. Um, it was available for purchase there before, I think a couple of months before it was available in the stores. It is out in stores now. Um, this is a co-op for two player only, which is a little weird, but it completely works in this game. And that's Sky Team. And I even got, um, I even took this over recently and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to show my mother how to play this (laughs) 73 year old mother. And so at first I was like, okay, we're, you're not supposed to communicate, but I said, we're going to talk. We're going to, I'll let you see, you know, you're not supposed to show each other's dice. There's a little screen that has a player aid on it, but you throw your dice behind it. So only you can see it. So in this game, when you start out, the object is <coughs> you have about, I think it's about seven, seven to eight turns, maybe nine um, to, land your airplane um uh, and uh, you i think it's seven seven turns because i think you start out at like seven thousand feet um so in every um every time you go after each turn your plane automatically descends a thousand feet so that's your kind of round tracker or your game tracker um and then you have to do different things as a pilot and a co-pilot so at the beginning of the game, you are allowed to kind of talk strategy. Like, here's what I'm going to work on, or here's what I'm going to try to do. Or, But it's it's a dice game that you, once you start, you are not supposed to talk to each other at all. And you ha- your dice, you have four dice, you roll them, they're hidden from each other. And then basically it's like, okay, there's the, the um, tilt of the airplane, I'll say. Um, whether we're flying even, you know, to the horizon or whether we're turning left or right. So I will put a dice and that's that one. And your engine speed are two things that you are required to do on every turn, which gives you two other dice. And then as the pilot, you have the ability to like make a call, uh, to the tower to like clear, to clear, um, airplanes that are in your path in front of you. Um, out of the way, <clears throat> or you can um, start to lower the landing gear um, and also they're applying brakes. 
The co-pilot has two opportunities to clear airplanes out in front, and they're going to be responsible for lowering flaps. Um, and then, so you have to put your attitude of the aircraft and your engine speed in. And then depending on like the combination of the two, so like if for your tilt or your attitude of the aircraft, um, if I put a three dice down and your, your co-pilot puts a three, then you stay you stay in the position. So if you start out straight and level, you're going to stay straight and level. If I put a three and they put a two, then my number is higher by one. So the airplane's going to tilt one tick towards me like we're in a turn. Um, and in some, as you advance, like the basic game, it's just you're coming straight in and landing. So you don't really need to worry about turning. Other advanced airport scenarios will have you requiring you to turn in different things. So, and again, you can't talk to your, your co-pilot. Um, and if you turn it too far, then the plane basically crashes out of the sky. So you can, you can't have a variation of, was it once? If you, if you have more than a three variation in your dice, then you've basically rolled over and crashed the plane. Um, same with the speed. So the speed you put dice out and, um, good point, Rob. Um, okay. So I, I'm, I'm going in too, too much on this. Um, apologize. It's right. We're just giving our list, but basically you got to work back and forth to, to manage these things. And you, you have to keep your speed at certain to, to advance towards the airport. If you don't, then you're not going to make advantage and you could, you could end up, but you are lowering your altitude every turn. So if you land, and you're not at the airport, and you crash. So all all different types of ways that the game can. Um, uh, there, there's a lots of different things in the game and scenarios that makes it uh, really fun. So I've got this at number two. Or I'm sorry, number ten. Um, it's a really fun little co-op game for two people. Okay, my number nine is a game from AEG called Waffle Time. And uh, this was an unexpected game that uh, I played over at Gen Con where I didn't really know much about it. I wasn't like super intrigued by it, but when I did play it, I really enjoyed it. Um, It's basically you're just playing uh, pieces on top of a waffle, (laughs) which is a grid basically and you're just putting waffle ingredients up on top and trying to make certain combinations it's just got a nice little charm i i do enjoy the uh the food theme to it like you got what well, like syrup and like berries and stuff like that it's it's just an interesting fun light little game that actually gets to be kind of thinky so um that's my number nine and uh i enjoyed it quite a bit all right um, my number nine is terraforming Mars. Um, I only got to play it once, but I did play the terraforming Mars, the dice game and also enjoyed that. And I want to play this game. I, I'd like be willing to play both the dice game and the original Mars terraforming Mars game again. And that alone, the fact that I, I really want to play it again is why it's on my list. And I think this one's lower because I, And I think as I play it more, I do believe this will jump up my list. Um, But I really enjoy all the different variations of um, ways to play the game. It it, it really reminds me of, um, oh, I just realized I'm going to have to make a change because I have something that's not on this list that needs to be. But anyways, this really reminds me of another game that I really like that I just realized is not on my list, that there's so many different variations or options that you can do to play. Like you're not. So some games, it's like if you didn't do this at the beginning, you're just hosed. Like there's so many ways to win. It's so many different ways to do things. And I really appreciate that about Terraforming Mars. Um, Some people might have like, I don't know. They're just, they're getting all these certain cards and doing things. And like the, the, the last time I played, in fact, the guy that taught it, he's like, I've never seen anyone with so many discount like cards that were allowing me to buy, buy cards for sometimes three, sometimes five 
point uh, coins cheaper than the cost of it. And it was like, I was able to just get stuff because I was getting it so much cheaper. Um, and it's just like, it was really kind of neat. But there's so many different strategies that you can do, but it, I like that. Cause it, I feel like it's a level playing field. And I, even if I get behind on something, I I'm usually doing very well in one aspect. So I don't feel like I'm a, you know, totally lost the game. Cause it's like, wow, I did this very well. Um, so I really like that. So that's my number nine. Okay. My number eight is one of the games I just talked about Alhambra roll and write. It's, uh, again, one of the, I, I have a soft spot for roll and write games. Um, you know, always love me some guns, John clever and, and a couple of the other ones out there. Um, and, uh, I rather enjoyed this one. Um, uh, it's uh it's pretty good it's enough to be on my uh list <laughs> for the year so that's uh alhambra roll and right and uh i still think you know i mentioned it already i i think that what really draws me in is that targi hook and uh, i really love targi so that that sure probably boosted it somewhat but uh yeah that's my number eight all right um so I just kicked out my number eight off completely off the list. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. I, I <laughs> it it deserves an honorable mention. So I'm going to give a real quick honorable mention to Cascadia. Um, I I I really want to play that game some more. I really enjoyed it. The one time I got to play it, and I bought the Landmarks expansion for it, and I haven't got that out yet. But um, pretty soon I'm going to take that to game night, like we're playing this. But I, I realized I severely missed something else that is actually further up my list. So, um, so this game, this one here, so everything else got bumped down by one. Um, but Sagani is my number eight. And this was one I just learned a few weeks ago. Again, like I just talked about it. Absolutely love the game. It is real easy to learn. It is really a, it's like a real brain thinker. Like, but it it doesn't, it's not like, it doesn't, it's not really bad. Like, it, it feels like a very light to medium weight game for me. Um, a lot of players, you know, might say this is just a light game, but there is some, there is uh, some thought going to it. You're trying to figure out, you know, where to put these tiles and which direction to face the tiles and which one's going to benefit you. And you've got to think forward as well as not just in the moment. And, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this game. Um, so that, that's my number eight. All right. Uh, my number seven is uh, going to be Siberian. This is uh, one of the Shadi Torby Torbay uh, games in the um, Oniverse. That's like the series of games. I think there's like eight or nine of them now, and it is the latest one. Uh, this is what I'll call a perfect little game or big game in a little box. Sometimes we get like little games in big boxes <laughs> like ticket to ride size boxes <laughs> this is like the opposite where it it just has a feel uh, granted it's it's mostly cards and it's got a couple pieces and a small tiny board but it just has the feel of of uh like a bigger game where you're just going through and you're using robots to repair these machines and most actually all these games are card based and one of the things i appreciate in this game is it's not like like play for 30 seconds shuffle the deck of cards play for 30 seconds shuffle the deck of cards i'm looking at you on irim what's the first game it's oh it's such a chore to shuffle those cards i know i'm complaining over nothing but uh it's just an enjoyable little game um I'm not quite sure where it ranks um, in all of the games. Um, I had mentioned that I would probably, well, that I wanted to go through and uh, just go through all of the games and uh, kind of compile a, a list and talk about them all in the show. So that's something that I'll do next, early next year. But um, but I rather enjoyed this one. It just came out 
probably within the last couple weeks. Um, if you like any of these Oniverse games, uh, definitely check this one out. It gets a thumbs up for me. So that was my number seven, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So my number seven is um, a zombie game because it's always fun to fight zombies. And this is a Zombicide version two. Um, I've played the first, I played V1, um, but when I bought my own copy, I did get the version two release. And I like some of the things they did in that. I think it was a big improvement over the first version of the game. Um, just some of the the way you place your your um, stuff in your hand and in your backpack and just, they, they just kind of, the, the the things that you place all your information on and um, like the plastic things and the moving the little pegs around. They did some nice updates to that game and it's, it's, it's a hard game. Like you really have to work together. You have to have a group of people that are willing to work together. Um, if you want to succeed. So if you have some alpha people that are going to go and run and gun and do their own thing, you're probably all going to die. Um, it's, it's one of those, you just got to have a good group that are willing to work together and, talk things out, but it's a lot of fun. It's intense. And man, it just, there's so many zombies on, on the board at times. It's just, it just gets crazy, um, overwhelming and super fun. I, I absolutely love it. It's, it's a great game. Um, now I, I haven't played any of the expansions and I know there's a ton of them, but it's just like, I'm good with the base game. It, it's just, there's so much, there's so many like missions to do in that one that, um, I don't need all the other stuff, but definitely a lot of fun one i hope to get to play many more times this year coming year uh, again at number seven is zombicide version two all right my number six is kingdom builder anniversary edition so this is an updated version that i got earlier this year of the old school kingdom builder game and uh, it's got pretty much like the same style boards uh, that not a huge change in those but uh everything else has been i'll call uh like de not deluxified crazily but improved like uh, a lot of these little tiles that you get they're now acrylic pieces which uh, which feel real nice um and then uh you have these like little houses in the game in the regular game they're like these tiny little houses like think kind of like the things that you get in monopoly right where you put them on you know the 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 different <laughs> spots on monopoly but uh in this game they have like really nice like big pieces and then there's these like castle pieces as well which in the base game are just tiles so it gives it a really nice three-dimensional view and uh just makes it just a tiny bit more uh, fun to play. So um, that is my number six. All right. At my number six is one I've mentioned several times. This is a great campaign co-op game. And it's so good that my game group was able to get a guy who does not like co-op games. He hates them. They're no fun. There's not a, he's like, he just wants, I want to have a score, build up a score, beat someone else. Well, he messaged me the other day, sent me a text message and says, I'm buying this for myself so I can play it solo. <laughs> nice. Um, and is the one always asking me to bring this game. And that is Dorf Romantic. Um, this is a game I, I, I demoed at Gen Con and was one that I was like, I probably shouldn't get this. And after we played the sat down and were kind of supposedly taught by the person who really had no idea what they were doing, they did a terrible job, but there was something about it that I'm like, it really reminded me of, um, like Cascade, not Cascadia, but, um, Carcassonne. And yeah. it kind of reminded me of Carcassonne and I like Carcassonne. And I'm like, I just, there was something about it that I'm like, I want to give this one a shot. And in my game group has fallen in love with this. We play it often. We're, we're expanding our world. It, it's, we're always getting new stuff to put into the game for the next time. It's just so much fun. We continue to enjoy it. 
And every time we play, if we reach certain scores, we're unlocking certain things and we're getting, you know, then we have new things to try to figure out how we're going to get these scores and keep getting higher scores to unlock more stuff. And it's just the replayability of it um, or just in the campaign, if you will, as we're going through this, it's just there's so many ways like you can choose how you want to go to unlock certain things at certain times. And it's just, it's been a tremendous amount of fun. And we've had a lot of people like, Oh, what's this and watch us play. And just, it's a, a huge surprise for me. This is the one that I thought I might regret buying. I absolutely do not regret this. Um, and it would be higher on my list if it wasn't for the other five that are just <laughs> Absolutely tremendous, but yeah. um, Dorf is such a great game. They're coming out with a dual version. I believe it's released in Europe, so probably next year it'll show up in the U.S. Uh, I think it's called Dorf Romantic Duel, I believe. Um, and it's going to make it a competitive version of the game. So I'm definitely going to be all over that, and uh, I already know who I'm going to going to play with and that'll be that guy in my group who doesn't like co cooperative games even though he loves this game <laughs> yeah. but we'll, we're getting a, a competitive version of this so mm -hmm. and even there like some of the things can cross into your campaign so there's going to be things that you can bring over to the cooperative campaign version so really looking forward to it Dorf Romantic number six okay my number five is Flamecraft so this is the game about dragons they get like all these powers and they go to different these to these different stores and uh uh the thing that i really enjoy about this game is uh, i just like the chain like i call it chaining i don't know if, what the proper term is but it's sort of like you get some of this here and you can use it there and then so on um it's uh i you know i've got only the base set Unlike somebody I, that I know that's got all the the fun stuff for it. Hey, I only have the base set. <laughs> that's true. I just bought all the extra, th yeah. which is funny because all my deluxe component they they did a re like a version two of the deluxe components because they sold out of everything. Yeah. When they did, and I got notified, hey, they're gonna you can pre order them, and I did. They actually showed up today. Yeah. So I am now deluxified <laughs> in my Very game. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun little game, and I, I do have one little quibble about it, and it's really stupid. <laughs> I hate the board. <laughs> oh. It's it's like this rolled up, would you call it a neoprene mat? It's, 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 yeah. Anyway, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, the mouse pad-like material and stuff. And I, I, I like that surface, but I wish that they could have just had like, let's say like a regular board and make it more rectangular or square instead of this big, long freaking table runner. Oh <laughs> yeah. <just> massive. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a great game. That's a minor quibble and that's just me being silly, but uh, uh, it's, it's a fun little game, surprising. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's a very cutesy you know, with the theme, with the dragons, you know, it, it is what it is, but uh, it's a fun, fun game. So that is my number five, Flamecraft. I, I, it's one of those two. I, I like this game. It, this needs to be in my top 10 and I just, it, I couldn't find a home for it. No, no, it's, <laughs> it, it needs to be here. See, the um, thing with these lists is that there's so many good games just because it's not in the top 10 doesn't mean that it's, it's bad it's just right you you just had to choose and yeah and our list changed from week to week too right i mean our tastes true very yeah true if if i hadn't played terraforming mars what two weeks ago yeah. that flamecraft would have probably been in that spot but because i played that and i had so much fun with it that it just you know there there it goes you know i i, I what is it cult of the new it was something new i played and loved and it took over something that I hadn't played in a while, but, but no, that's a great choice. Um, all right. So my number five 
is if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that I like all things Clank. And I fell in love with Clank, the original game, the, the moment I played it. And I bought the space version. I bought the legacy version. Oh, that's right. I have a legacy version of this, don't I? That I have not played. If I have to cut that thing up, I'm not even breaking it out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Clank. It'll be a collector's item. It'll just be a collector's item. Um, but when I played Clank Catacombs, that really changed it. And I absolutely love Catacombs the best because the board is not, the board is changing. You never know what the board's going to look like. You never know when you go to the edge of a square and say, I'm going to go this path. You don't know what you're going to go into. And like the original games, you had the board in front of you and kind of plan out, well, I'm going to go this way. And, and I, I know you, you know, a lot of times you might plan out what your path's going to be and then the cards don't allow you to do it. Or someone does something that forces you to change because it's like, oh, they got to the, to the, um, oh, artifact before you, um, or the, the dragon's being awoken too quickly and angered and you got to get out quicker than maybe you've planned. But there's still that if you've played it a lot, you probably kind of have a, a pre-established plan of like, I'm going to, you know, you probably get people to kind of pretty much do the same thing. Well, in catacombs, you can't because the board is different every single time you play. And it, and it's really neat because it's like, oh, I'm going to go down this path and then you got to take a tile and you flip it over and then you can rotate that tile. But you're kind of stuck between what's available on that tile of where you have to go. And you might end up having to fight some monsters to get to finish your path. So it's like, do you have the swords available? Are you prepared for that? Maybe you've got a couple of moves. You got a couple of boots ready. And the next path you are in is um, like a, a, the crystal cave or whatever that stops you. Um, you know, it, it's just, you don't know. And it makes the game just that much more intense and enjoyable there's times where it's like you, it will rotate like rotate cubes and, or, or, or the, the squares. And it's like, I had that happen to me where I'm like, I know my next move. And then someone went somewhere and pulled a card. And it was like all these cubes with, or the squares with people on them all rotate. And it's like, it totally changed my path. Um, it's just like, there's a lot, it just adds so much variety to the game um, and adds so many new cool things. So that's Clank Catacombs, my number five. Oh, and uh, by the way, it is a legacy game, so you do put stickers on the board and uh, destroy cards and stuff like that. <laughs> it ain't just getting played. So you, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't coming off the shelf. <laughs> yeah, and apparently there's a um, Acquisitions Incorporated Upper Management Pack. That, I have that. Uh, yeah, so so that is what you would play after you're done with the main oh. Acquisitions Incorporated pack. Because there's two packs oh. for that. There's upper, a, upper management and yeah, one. and there's also something called something the team pack. It's I can't tell. It's like a B team or. B team pack or something like that. But anyways, maybe that's another thing that just allows you to continue your legacy, but we'll see. We'll see what ticket to ride happens. And then mm -hmm. if I'm okay with it, maybe I'll just, yeah. I did spend a lot of money. I might as well play it. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it just kills me to destroy stuff. Think of it like it's an experience thing, but then again, I mean, there's not many games that we get 12 plays out of. I mean, some we play more yeah. than others, but yeah, I, most, I, yeah. Mo yeah, most games get like less than half a dozen. Probably. Yeah. That's probably a good point. Okay. Mm. So number five, Clank Catacombs. <laughs> okay. Uh, my number four uh, is a game that surprised me and I enjoyed it immediately uh, when I played it. It was actually quite a lot of fun. It's called Deep Dive from AEG. This is super light. Think of a game that you can play with 
family, friends, you can bring it over by people that aren't gamers and uh, they'll probably enjoy it. It's a press your luck game where you, uh, you're you basically like penguins going deeper into the ocean. There's multiple levels. You're turning up these tiles. Some have food, some have predators. And it's like you press your luck. How far do you go? Do you go deeper and get the you know the stuff worth more or do you just stop where you're at and um you know collect with you know collect the latest thing that you got so surprising game i really enjoyed it um uh definitely give it a thumbs up uh and uh that's my number four deep dive all right well you may be happy you may be sad to hear this next one um, happy that it's on my list, sad that it's not higher, but at number four is, I know one of Rob's favorite games. Um, he taught me originally at Gen Con. Um, I really was at the very, when he started to break it out, it immediately just like, I am not interested. Overwhelmed. <laughs> I was yeah. overwhelmed. It didn't look, it was like, oh, this is that Euro garbage. I'm just not interested in all these Euro land management and harvesting and whatever games and trading, you know, we were, we were in the midst of Gen Con and it was the last day and I was tired and I wanted to make one last purchase. And even though I went to look to buy this game, I I don't know what was wrong with me. What was so wrong with me? It was your vendetta. Yeah. um, But uh, Castles of Burgundy, um, I ended up buying the special edition, which was insane expensive. And at the time I'm like, why am I getting this? Because I really, when we played it at Gen Con, I know we, you had the original version and I was like, the, OG, the coloring yeah. on the board was terrible. It, yes. I, totally. I'm just like, I can't tell the difference between tan and yellow and I remember looking it up and I was Dude, like, okay, I'm colorblind. Like, so it's even worse. I know. <laughs> I, know I don't know how you do it. Um, Shades. But it's like, <laughs> it looks like they've, they improved on that, which they did. Um, and, but I was like, you know, Rob just keeps talking about this and raving about it. I'm like, you know, and I trust him. I'm like, I trust you. It's, it's got to be good. So I went ahead and I'm like, I'm going to get it to, and I have had the chance to play this now just in the last month. I think I've played it three times and oh my goodness. I love it. I absolutely love this game and I've yet to win and it just doesn't matter. It's okay. I, I just, yeah. it's so much fun. This is the one I was talking about earlier when I was talking about terraforming Mars that there's, there's so many different ways to win. And I decided this last week, I'm going to try a new strategy and it sounded like sound, a sound <laughs> strategy, but it it basically, um, yeah, I didn't, I scored one point less than the game prior to that when I wasn't doing it. So it didn't benefit me in any way, really. But it was another way to play the game. Um, and essentially what I did was I decided I'm not going to go for any ships. If I don't worry about being first on the game track, mm. And if I don't worry about taking goods, which in this case, everyone else was kind of grabbing stuff up. So there really wasn't a lot of goods sitting out there to take to benefit from it. And I was like, that's six less things that I have to buy for blue that allows me to buy six more towns or bonuses to try to get those um, completing the sections. Like I never go for, I never go for the mines. Well, I did complete the mine. So I got the first one to fill all that in. I got that bonus. Um, I filled in all the animals. I was the first to fill in the animals, the first to fill in all the castles. Um, and, uh, which I did win the game. I did win this game. Oh, okay. Right. Did, didn't I? I don't know. I thought I did because I was only playing against two of my kids. I'm pretty sure. I have to go back and double check. Um, but uh, yes, I did win. Um, 
but it was the point compared to playing. And I was teaching my two older kids. So it was their first time. So I, I should have won. Right. But this strategy helped me get those bonus tokens and stuff like that. But compared to the previous game, I scored one less point than my previous game where I wasn't doing that. Um, and so, but it, it completely changed the way I played and kind of what my goal was. Um, so I, I, you know, it's like, okay, I, I, I still won. I probably still would have won had I played kind of more of like putting them out and moving, going first or, you know, keeping the, the ships and getting the, the, the goods and stuff like that. But there, what I really like about it was I was able to try something different and it really changed the way I was playing and it was fun and it was like, okay, well maybe that didn't do what I was hoping it, but I, you know, it still kept me where, like where I'm kind of used to scoring. It didn't affect me really negative or positive, but the gameplay was completely different. So it really changed what I was trying to do. And there's so many things in this game that allow you to, you know, bonus points at the end. What do you have? Um, and in fact, my oldest son thought he was ahead, thought he had pulled it off and that his sister came in second. Well, then she had, she wasn't done counting her points and she passed up over him and they thought they had won. It's like, um, I haven't even counted my 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 bonus tiles and all my yellow one, you know, end game. And then it was like, I just went right past them because of those. But that that's what I like about this game so much is just I've watched others be like way at the back. By the end of the game, they're either right up with everyone else or winning because of just, you know, OK, I'm not maybe I'm not doing something right. What else can I do? And there's there's so many options to kind of change your your scoring. Um, and you never know till the very end of the game. You don't really know who's winning. So I think that's really cool. <laughs> but anyways, number four, Castles of Burgundy. Hope that's not too big of an insult to you. Rob. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm glad it's in your top ten. I'm glad actually I'm glad you enjoy it. Because <laughs> it's uh it's a really awesome game. Has been for years. Yes. Okay. Um, so my number three is Deep Rock Galactic. This is the Rock board game. Stone. Rock and Stone. <laughs> to the bone. So this is the tabletop adaptation of the video game. And anytime I hear anything like, you know, Video game adaptation of a movie, board game of a video game, whatever. It's like raised eyebrow. Um, what? This has got to be garbage because there's so many <laughs> bad ones. And yes. this game is the tabletop version of the game. So well done. And I know Mark and I were talking uh, a couple weeks back because they had the um expansions on uh, kickstarter for this to add like a bunch more missions and it took a surprisingly a lot of willpower for me to not back it <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like i i just can't because i i need to stop the expansion craziness and uh, yeah if if i really like a game later on i'll get it but uh yeah i'm uh, <laughs> I'm not doing the thing anymore of getting an expansion uh, at the same time or before the main game. <laughs> but uh, such a well done game. Uh, love it. Love it. I, I love the video game. And there's a uh, in the next uh, like two, three months, I believe they're going to be coming out with a solo version called um, Galactic Survivor or something, something Survivor. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be coming out on Steam. But uh, such a well done game truly captures the essence of the game. So, if uh, if you've played Deep Rock Galactic, the video game on any platform, you need and you enjoyed it, you need this. And um, if you haven't played it, then you need to play it, and then you need this. <laughs> yeah, 
Exactly. So that is my number three. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Rob. My number three is um, mine is a game that is a adaptation of a video game. That sounds familiar. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, you play as a dwarf where you tunnel down into this planet mm. of Hoxus yes. to mine for minerals and fight creatures. And uh, mine is also Deep Rock Galactic. <laughs> Ooh, shared victory there at number three. Yes, we matched on this. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, the I, I echo everything you said. Um, what I also want to say is the you can buy the base game for about eighty dollars um and it won't come with i don't think it comes with i think the minis for the miners for the dwarves but i think all the um creatures i think are like um standees i believe um but if you go in for the full version it does have some tremendous miniatures that just are really great representations of the game um the creatures in the game they did an amazing job. And I, I I wondered when I got this, I was like, you were tunneling through walls. How are they going to, you know, and every time you play, it's different. Like in the video game, I'm like, how can you make a board game like that? And they pulled it off. I, I am stunned how well, the, like, I can't imagine doing this any better. Um, the quality of this game is insane. Uh, the dual layer player boards just everything is done to such a high quality and it's so impressive. Even the board, the, the game board is just, there's, there's something about the texture to it and, and everything is just, it's, it just screams quality. So it's well worth the money. Um, if you like the game, um, if you, if you don't find a game group, maybe someone's got it and ask them, let's play this. It's really fun. And now this one, you can also do a campaign style. And like in the video game, they call them deep dives. And you can do that in this board game. And basically, you can do the one-off missions and just play them like that. Or you can do a deep dive, which basically means you are going to do, you're going to do a couple of missions. You're basically going to go in, do a mission, uh, much like Zombicide, where there's, if you've done Zombicide, it's like, here's what you're supposed to do. Here's how to get out. And then there's rules for fighting the monsters and what, when they move and how far they move and when they attack and all that. So if you're able to go down and get your complete your mission and get out safely, then you would just go straight into the to mission number two. In any gear or upgrades that you got, you take them with you. And now you're more power, powerful into the next run. So it's really kind of cool that they've done that. Absolutely a fantastic game. This is one I absolutely must get to the table, and I will will insist, Rob, that we play this in February. Yes, at this board game Done deal con at TBGL con. <laughs> yes, um, and uh, yes, number three, Deep Rock Galactic. <clears throat> and and I was going to say the only way that they probably could have made the game better was to have the little miniatures pre painted. Just saying. Oh, that. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I'm actually, I bought some paints. I was going to plan to start painting some stuff and I never got around to it. And the thing is I bought some paints that were like from Hobby Lobby. It was just like kind of generic colors. Oh yeah. You don't do that. Don't do that. And I haven't started it, but they're all there. And I'm like, you know what? Those are going to be too bright. Like I need, yeah. I need different paints. And there's a, a game store um, that yeah, I also go to. Yeah, and you need special have, brushes um, for it. Yeah. Oh, special brushes too. I got. Yeah, they have a different kinds of brushes. of brushes. Okay, I got a whole bunch. I bought this big pack with all these, like from real tiny to thicker to, so I can get real small and detailed. Yeah, but, like some brushes only have like, I swear they got like one bristle <laughs> on them, <laughs> so you can like you know trace very fine lines and stuff. And then hey, I, I'm not. I'm, I won't I'm be gonna, doing that. I'm going to say it how it is, dude. We're old enough where you also need a big honking magnifying glass. Just I saying. bought one with a light. <laughs> okay. All right. Right on. <laughs> and the problem is I don't want to do it because my hand, I'm right-handed. Yeah. And at certain times, at certain positions with my hand, it shakes. Like I can't control it. It's like if I go to pour a can of Coke, 
Like I can hold my hand right now and tilt it, my right hand, without anything in my hand, and my hand doesn't shake. But if I am holding like a can of Coke or something I'm pouring into glass, my hand will shake and I can't stop it. It just, and I don't know why. So like, how am I going to paint? That's what I'm worried about. I'm like, I'm going to be in there and my hand's going to be shaking and like, oh, this is terrible. So, but um, they've got, was it Army Painter, I think is the brand. And they've got some speed paints. And I'm going to go down there this week and talk to the owners, um, know the owners. Um, they're awesome. And I'm just going to ask her about, you know, which, which is best. But I, I need different colors because like Deep Rock, yeah. um, I want to paint um, Zombicide. They don't, I can't have bright colors, right? You, you want... But- but you know, in I mean, Deep you Rock, put on some things, but not for yeah. most of it. So in Deep Rock, some of it is very like the the miners and the yeah. miners can be bright, but I don't want those bright colors on on the bugs. Yeah, that's true. So, so I'm gonna go find some different type and hopefully get into mm-hmm. painting some of my miniatures next yeah. year, and really finally do that. So, mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. so. So that was your number three. Yes. And we, and we tied with that one. All right. My number yeah. two is big surprise here. Maybe it's surprised that it's not number one. Uh, Castles of Burgundy special edition. So uh, um, I skipped the anniversary edition when they came out with that. So I had the original. Actually, my copy says the Bergen von Bergen. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> the official like German english release not even like the u.s release and um i've loved this game for years um and uh it's gonna go down as like it's the game that you know it's not not necessarily going to be the game that i'll always want to play but if anybody ever wants to play i'll be like yes and i will guarantee to have a good time does that make sense it's it's mm-hmm. uh, just, yep. I enjoy it so much. It's just fun and um, even better if I win. But uh, Castles of Burgundy takes the base game, um, takes it up a bunch of lo- levels. Uh, make It's got some t- uh, two-layer boards. Uh, it's got some cool things to keep your little hexagons in place. Uh, love, the, love that plastic thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And... Um, the one thing I maybe we need to do this uh, at the con next year is uh, actually to give that vineyards thing a, a shot because yeah. I've just played the base game. And oh, and the thing I was going to mention when you were talking was so you had your strategy of no ships. I bet that that strategy might work. Uh, it just doesn't work on board one. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So if. I bet you there are more one or more boards where that is a perfectly good strategy, uh, just yeah. because of the layout of the stuff. But uh, right. yeah, so Castles of Burgundy Special Edition uh, is my number two. All right, my number two is I don't think I've ever played a game and it had as much fun as I've had with this one. And this is something that I I never had heard of. I saw it at Gen Con. Um, decided to go up and try the demo of it. And it was kind of a weird, it's so weird to demo a game. Like it, I don't know how to explain it. It's like we were trying to have fun, but it's just, it's awkward because you're playing with people you don't know or, you know, and you got these people that are like trying to sell it to you, you know, that's, so it's just this weird feeling, but it was like, okay, this is cool. And then I'm like, okay, I walked over to buy it. And they're like, oh, we don't, we, we, we have, or they were out for the day, I think. And I wanted their, their big box version. And I was like, well, I could buy everything there and have all the separate stuff. And I was like, well, they're like, we're going to have more copies of our big box version in the morning. So I was like, I'll try it. And the game I'm talking about is Thunder Road Vendetta. And so I, I remember going back the next morning, we, we made sure to get there early and line up. And in fact, um, I wanted this game, uh, 
my friend uh, Franco wanted Sky Team, and my daughter was hanging around with me, and I wanted Sky Team as well. <clears throat> so I sent her with money to with with Franco, and I said because he's going to go stand in line with Sky Team, and I'm like, he, they won't sell him two copies, you know. So I said, you go stand with him, and you buying for me, get get you know get us a copy, and I go to the other line, and even though we were there early. I was one of the last ones to get a copy of Thunder Road Vendetta Maximum Chrome Edition. And it was just like that line was just whoop, so fast. And same with the same with the Sky Team. And they were we were there as soon as the door opens running in and they were so far back in line. It was insane. But I got the Maximum Chrome Edition and and then um, it wasn't that night. It was the following night that um, Franco was looking at it. And he's like, oh, this seems cool. So he went to the booth that day, the next day, and tried the demo. And he ended up buying the base game. And um, or did I buy that? I did buy the base game that day. Yeah, you did. I did buy the base game. That's right. So I did buy the base game, but then and had and like, I think read up more about it that night. And I was like, man, I'd really like to get a copy of this other one if I could get the the big one. Um and, uh, but Franco, he went and ended up buying the main game. And then that night you and Jay and, 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 and all of us met at Franco's house and we played this game with Braun as well. And I, talk about so much fun when you're, when you're in a group with the people that just are like, we're just going to have fun and we're going to get into this and we are bumping cars and and we're flying over each other and we're talking smack back and forth it just it was it was so much fun i it just was like this game is incredible it it just was like the mad max of board games i mean it's, oh, yeah. if you know what mad max is that's that's what this is you you know you're you're racing it's a racing game but you have to eliminate at least one player because otherwise you just keep going. It does, you know, someone has to be completely wiped out. Then it starts the race portion of whoever gets to the, the finish line first. And so it, it's just craziness. Like, you know, who are you going to do? You know, who are you going to take out and what's going to happen? Are they going to, you know, what, what do they have available to take you out? And, you know, what's the road conditions? What hazards do you have in front of you? What are there mountains? Could you get slammed into a mountain? You got to plan your path. And it, it's just, there's helicopters and big trucks, small, you know, small, medium and large vehicles. And you're, you're slamming into each other. And it's just, oh, it's just, it was so much fun. I just, oh, this game is great, great fun. Uh, so number two for me, Thunder Road Vendetta. All right. And my number one is Thunder Road Vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what Mark said um, uh, definitely holds true. I'll, I'll, I'll mirror all of that stuff. And um, this is a game that I wasn't really, I'll say, looking forward to it initially because when restoration games first came out with a couple of some of their first games, I got in on those and I don't want to say I was disappointed, but I, 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 the games were okay. I just didn't really like enjoy them. I didn't have the nostalgia factor for some of them that some people might have. And so, you know, the forbidden Island. No, whatever that one was with the island and the marbles that they had, like that one I was kind of interested in and, or the volcano and the marbles. Uh, that one was sort of like interested in, but I passed on it and then just sort of like figured that they would be like a nostalgia game company. And that was, you know, not for me. And I was really surprised because when I enjoyed the game so much and I'm like, restoration games, really? <laughs> they did it? And I was, so I was pleasantly surprised. And like, this is a game that came out in like the mid 80s. Like, do you even remember it from when no. we were kids? Yeah, me neither. No. And um, 
But I mean, there's a lot of games, and by that time we were in, into computers, so who wanted to play boring board games at that time? But right. uh, but yeah, it was just a surprise. It's a great fun game, and it's definitely got a take that mentality. So if you have friends that really love to like go after other people, they'll they'll love this game. Now on the flip side, if if somebody doesn't like to get ganged up on and they have like a huge problem with it, <laughs> a huge problem with it <laughs> where they like get really mad. Eh, I don't know if they'd want to play this one, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. And I've got the base game and, you know, I, there's been a couple of times where I was looking at the Chrome edition, you know, looking at all the other stuff that it has and it's like, Oh, it'd be cool to have that other stuff. But uh, yeah, the, the base edition is, like more than enough it's a whole lot of fun and i'd say a fair amount of replayability it's easy to pick up and uh yeah like like you said when we were playing it after gen con that one day it was a hoot man it was, it was just a good time we were just having the best time playing it so uh that is my number one Thunder yeah Ray. i think if you were gonna get an expansion to the game i would probably just pick up um chop shop Okay. Because that I haven't played it yet, but I've heard people talk about this that because that gives you like a crew leader, which gives you custom command board and variable player powers. So there's like additional special effects for each of your cars and car upgrades. So it it kind of expands on that. And and my understanding of what I've read about it is it really improves the game a lot um, because now you have like a driver. Like, it's not just you. It's like, okay, I'm this driver and I have these abilities as well. Um, so that's that's kind of, um, you know, the other stuff, uh, the big rig, you know, and, and there's, there's you're driving this big semi and then another, to add another character uh, or, or player pieces is like, you could be five motorcycles and, and then the Carnage at Devil's Run gives you more maps and some, you know, you could be on fire and there's different things like that. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, everything I've heard is that the Chop Shop is probably the best expansion um, just because of the additional powers and abilities that your driver will have. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, it's awesome. Um, all right. So that brings me my number one. And this is a game that, I had before we went to Gen Con, it was something I had wanted that I saw on GameFound and I had missed the um, crowdfunding and it did come back as a re-release. And so they were going to re-release the deluxe version of the game and they were adding an expansion. And this is the game Planet Unknown. So I know Rob and I both jumped on that one. Yep. <clears throat> excuse me, into that Kickstarter and, 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 or game found. And, and, um, that's supposed to be coming out this, I think this coming spring, spring of 2024, summer, 2024, something like that. And I, it was just something like, it looked like it might be a little overwhelming, but it was, again, something about it. Like, I really like what I'm seeing. This looks really cool. And I, the course, Adam's apples games was at Gen Con and they had it on display and I stood there and kind of watched them, the guy go through how to play it at the time. It just seemed to kind of like this is, you know, I don't know, it might be a little overwhelming, but they were selling the game. They had it for sale and I hadn't been able to find it anywhere. And I was like, you know, I've got this already ordered, but it's one I really wanted, you know, and so I'm like, I'm just going to buy it anyways. So I bought it. And I absolutely do not regret it. I, this game, I have bragged to everybody about it. It's and I, there's I know there's someone in my group that doesn't. She doesn't really care for it, but she's like it's just because she's like I just never do well. <laughs> but <clears throat> otherwise, other than that, it, it it's been met well. Um, I know it's going to be something that when my new version comes in, which will be the base game, but the deluxe version with the lid, which, oh my goodness, this thing needs a lid on the Lazy Susan. If I had to complain, that's the only thing is they should have thought of this beforehand. Um, 
because pe- a lot of people stand their games upright to display them, which mine is proudly on display, and all the pieces fall out of the Lazy Susan, so it's a disaster every time you open the box. Um, but um, the new the new release is going to put a, a lid on that Lazy Susan to hold all the little polyominals in place, and it comes with an expansion, and it's going to be the deluxe version, which I think out of the one I've got, it's just... It just, instead of like um, little, um, oh, what are they called? The life pods and the uh, the meteorites, instead of being cut out wooden pieces, they're going to be like 3D printed um, plastic pieces, which look cool. And I think the rovers got a little more detail than the ones that were in the base game, but the little rovers are cool anyways. But the game is just, it's so easy to teach. It's really easy to play. Um, there's so many variations of, like depending on which corporation you play. So it plays up to six, which is great. And you can play everybody with the same corporation and the same planet so that everyone's kind of like on an equal footing. And it's a great way to start new players. Um, or you can have everyone can be a different corporation and every corporation like has different abilities where there's one that gives you more rovers. Um, um, but you have to like, um, which is great. You get more rovers to go pick things up on the planet and get them out of the way. But then I think that's the one that requires you to bring though, like an asteroid, you go get the asteroid and then you got to bring that Rover back to the, to the station to get it cleared. Um, where others is like, you just run your Rover over it and it clears it out. So, but they only have like half the amount of rovers and, you know, so there's, you know, some might have a corporation that is really good with water and there's a, there's a board that's like mostly ice and that's why you make the water. So if you can get that board and play that planet with this corporation, you know, but then other things like, you know, obviously like biomass and and the greenery is not going to be something you work at, but another corporation and board might benefit them in that way. And so there's all these different ways to play this game. Um, depending on how you want to play it. So it's really got a lot of great replayability. There's a lot of flexibility of how you might want to play. Um, it's always different. Um, in, in the, 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 I love the idea of the lazy Susan, you know, so when, if, when you've, you, some, whoever's the starting player that round, they get to pick where they pick from the lazy Susan. And then everyone else is stuck with picking from one of the two trays that are right in front of them. Um, on, cause you all have a marker around this thing saying this I'm taking from here. And so then you have to choose of the two options, which ones do you want to take to try to put on your board? And it's just, it really, you know, um, creates, um, it's like a puzzle. It's polyomino, it's, um, base building. It's, um, not really resource management, but you are trying to get like your life pods out of the way. So you get points for those, unless you play, there's a corporation that you don't cash in your life pods, but you use them to unlock bonuses for you. You know, you use them to get extra abilities in the game. And it's just, it's just such a well done game. Um, And this is my number one for, for this year, planet unknown. Love it. Love it. Love it. I wasn't surprised by that one. Just saying. (laughs) (laughs) I knew it was going to be up there. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, That's our uh, top tens for both of us. And then I I thought it'd be fun to have just a couple more things. Um, Just talk about some of our favorite, uh, you know, gaming moments uh, within the last year. And then uh, anything notable um, that uh, we just want to mention that's just game related you know it doesn't have to be super significant but just you know something that's kind of like um interesting enough that uh we're going to talk about so you want to start off with uh your uh favorite moments of 2023 just go on through the whole list then i'll go after you're done okay okay so um for me the game i just talked about falling in love with planet unknown it was I had already backed an expensive Kickstarter and then I bought the you know the game, which was not cheap at Gen Con um, <clears throat> buying a game Just twice one? before playing. <laughs> yeah. 
um, yeah. buying it twice. Yeah. Before even playing it and just it turning out to be the, my just most favorite game. I think I've ever played just, I'm in love with this game. And I, I, that was like one of my favorite moments of like, cause that usually doesn't happen. And I am just like, it, it was just, I'm so glad it worked out. Um, took the risk. It worked out when my expand, when my new copy comes in, I'm going to give this copy away to someone in my game group and just gift it to them. Here you go. I've played it with love, continue it on with, you know, your friends and family, uh, you know, I'm going to give it away to somebody, but just the sheer enjoyment of learning to play that and just absolutely loving it was such a great memory for me this year. Um, another one is playing deep rock galactic, just the not knowing again, buying an expensive Kickstarter, not knowing what it really is going to be like. Um, and well, actually, I don't think that was a Kickstarter. I think that one was just might've been a after, um, or just an ad that I bought directly from them. But, um, again, it was expensive. I, I'm like, I love the video game. And like, how is this going to translate? And it was just amazing. I, I just, you know, I love the board game. It's really fun to play. I, I just, it just translated so well. We've talked about that. Um, another great moment is just going to Gen Con for the first time and, you know, getting to hang out with you and Brun and Franco and my daughter getting to come along and enjoy it. And just, it was such an amazing experience it was expensive <laughs> yeah but it it was so worth it um and i am so excited to go back again in 2024 and see everyone again yeah they're gonna open up experience sales it. soon oh yeah well then we need to be i'm going in <laughs> i'm going all in cover me luke i'm going in um I will definitely be coming again this year. Um, it just was so much fun. And I, I think this year I'm going to try to spend less time in the retail hall. I want to spend more time at the table playing stuff. Um, and uh, I really look forward to it. But that was the most, that was my favorite moment of this year was Gen Con. And then the last thing, I mentioned this already when I talked about Thunder Road Vendetta, but just how much fun that game was playing with all of you guys at Franco's house. I, it, it was just so much fun, so much laughter, such just a great, great time. Um, that it just, it was, yeah. How can I say it was, um, and I think uh, one other thing would be, um, getting the courage to start up a game, start a group on meetup, trying to find some people to play, meeting yeah. some people, running into another there. group. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's just not me, man. I, the very first time I even went to a game store, tried to learn a game. I, my brain was just run, run, run. And it like makes no sense, but that's just, it's just me. I'm not an outgoing person. I'm, I'm like, if, if Rob comes up, Hey Mark, let's go do this. I'll be like, okay. You know, and I'm gone. I, I, I very much will follow, uh, you know, someone. I remember when I when I was uh, stationed in, in Germany, you know, a friend of mine was like, hey, we're going to go here. And I'm like, OK, but it's never anything I would just like, hey, let's go do this. I, I don't know why I'm that way. Like, you know, but it took a lot to start this game group. And then we I, I basically merged it with this other one that I found later, which um, was already established and in the area. And I'm like, well, we don't need to. Um, and then, so I just kind of joined over there and was just, I'm, I'm just a joiner. I'm just the gamer. Then a guy who always scheduled our Wednesday night games moved away to the other end of the country. I stepped up to like, okay, I can schedule these things. And then I started to step up and like, okay, we need to announce this at the store so people know about it. And now the, just within the last two weeks, the guy who formed the group is like, I'm never there. I paying all this money every month to, you know, to play, pay for the meetup group. And he's like, I just don't ever have time to play his family's He's got a ton of kids um, and a very large family. And, he, and I don't think I've ever met the guy, 
I've talked to him through discord, but he wants to base. He's like, I got to let it go. And I was like, I'll take, take it, it over. over for yeah. you. I did. And now this group that's huge is now <laughs> under my, I, I, I now run it. I now am the organizer, or your uh, people, the, the master. Yeah. I am God. No, <clears throat> it's like, it's all mine. <laughs> we will play. Um, we will play my top 10 games and that is it. <laughs> be a small group real quick but um no it's just like now it's like now it's my group and i mean it's not my group okay it's 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 our group i don't mean it that way but it's like now i'm kind of in charge of running this thing yeah and that's not where i'm very comfortable and but so expanding my own personal like improving myself of stepping out stepping into the unknown taking that risk trying to meet new people. Cause like, I'm always like, people come in, Hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, I'm very quiet. Now it's like someone will walk by and I'm like, Hey, are you looking for this group? Yeah. I'm like, Hey, I'm Mark. How you doing? It's just, I've gotten so much better at that. And it, that helps me in other parts of my life too. So, you know, gaming has helped me in other areas of being a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more, you know, eager to meet people and talk to people. So um, that's been a great, yeah. great moment too. So yeah, it opened up you? the whole what? social aspect to, yeah, exactly. To your life. Yeah. Well, my kids are all leaving. I got to find, mm-hmm. I got to find friends. I, my yeah. built in friends are really gone to college. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for me, so like, uh, I'd say my favorite moments and there's, there's so many, I'm just going to list out at probably three. Um, number one was definitely going to Gen Con. Uh, it was the, I haven't been in a couple of years cause of the pandemic craziness that's been going on and, and stuff. So last time I went was in 2019, I believe, cause they didn't have one in 20 and then I think 21 and 22 were like limited, and stuff so we skipped on those but uh yeah it, it was so good to be down there again and it's one of those things of like it's new but it's familiar still because <laughs> it's still the same center you know things are a little bit different you know organized and stuff like that but it's like once you get down there it's like it's all familiar and by now it's like i've got my routine I've got it down. I know exactly where to park and, yeah. you know, go back and forth, where to get food, whether you want like, you know, fast food or like more of a sit down place and, and stuff. So, uh, you know, th- that was awesome to get out there and it was even better that you got out there too. So it was awesome to see you and your daughter. Uh, my son wasn't able to make it this year, unfortunately. He had some other stuff that was going on at that time. So, um, so he kid needs go. to get his priorities straight, man. Yeah, I, it, it wasn't. It wasn't, Con. it wasn't up to him. But uh, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I'm just teasing. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna make sure that uh, <laughs> that doesn't happen again. Uh, but the thing that was cool too was that uh, you know it was. You know, all of us, air quote, adults and our kids, right? So although, uh, you know, Franco's kids didn't go, right? They didn't, I don't think they went. I think he just went. But Just uh, him, yeah. yeah, It was Jay and you. And then, you know, we all hung out together um, that one day afterwards. So it it was like the families all got together and... And yeah. it's like we all kind of knew each other, although I, Jay didn't know Franco and vice versa, but we all like otherwise knew each other. And, yeah. and so it, it was just cool. It was awesome to see you again and to hang out with you for a couple of days because it's been a while. Actually, I think last time we saw each other was like 2019 or maybe 2018. One, one of the two. And, it's been uh, a long time, yeah. <laughs> no, no. It, it was 2020. No, it was, it, it was yeah, in the it pandemic because I remember wearing the mask. It was, yeah, yep, that's right. Because that's when we went that whale trip, and I got so freaking sick. Yeah, yeah, that I yeah. your last day here, I was confined to bed. 
Yeah. So you were playing games with my kids all day. <laughs> I know, right? I had I brought you and, some you and board Blake games were playing there. with them. Yeah. Just think, maybe yep. I could have converted you into the uh, into the board game lifestyle sooner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> darn a, whales! <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, so yeah, going to Gen Con and hanging out with you that that was freaking awesome. And then you know, getting you to experience, you know, being there when you experienced your first Gen Con that that was also awesome too. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, this was, I just wanted to make mention of this cause, uh, you know, I'm going to amuse myself when I put this list out and stuff. But, uh, uh, one thing that also is uh, one of my favorite gaming moments is playing castles of Burgundy on uh, BGA and beating you by one point. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's one of my favorite yeah. moments too, that you only <laughs> beat me by one there point. And yeah. that essentially was my very first time playing. Give, give a nice really. spin. Yeah, I, like I had all. Hey, well played. I'll take what I can get. Well played. <laughs> so then uh, how about uh, anything notable um, gaming-wise for 2023? That uh, I, I don't know if this is what you were looking for, yeah. but <clears throat> I learned I don't need to buy every game and expansion. <laughs> so that's amazing that you're doing it like in your first year. <laughs> Usually that well, realization comes years later. <laughs> I, I so if you recall before I did my purge right before I did that, um, I was at like three hundred and thirty something games. Today I'm at two hundred and forty four. Okay. So two hundred and ten base games, thirty four expansions, um, and that includes the two that I just picked up today. Um, so, and even then I was like. Mm, I was like, do I really need these? And I was really debating on it. But um, yeah, I I did a major purge. And it was funny. I walked into the store last week and the, the almost the entire U section was <laughs> all my games. Nice. And I saw one guy already standing there looking at one of them. And I was like, yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, not knowing I need every game and expansion. Also realizing that I can only play one game at a time. Um, so having even now at 210 base games, if I played one every day, which you do, it, it would take me almost, it would take me almost a year to play every game I yeah, own. Yeah. Like, then that means I'm only playing them once, maybe, maybe, maybe once and a half. Right. <clears throat> so it's like a game that I like and I want to play multiple times. Well, then I really don't need this many. And I, I may still purge some more in the new year. I have a cabinet that has smaller stuff that I didn't go through. Um, so I, I might be still not done because I've come into, I got an idea of what I want. Um, and I really don't need that many because I've also learned and now subscribe to the theory that if someone in your game group has a game, I don't need to buy, buy it i can just play their copy that's crazy talk they, they uh, bring it to game night whatever why do i gotta buy it if we're gonna especially if i'm only gonna play it with them you're delusional <laughs> i'm trying to i don't believe you for <laughs> a I have, second i have two kids in college okay <laughs> well, i've got to find ways yeah. to save money <laughs> and i <clears throat> and i got a third one that's here still at home in high school and I don't know what he's going to do when he gets done in the two years. So <laughs> it may have three, right? So, well, um, if, I think if he wants, I can't to stay, buy every game. <laughs> I think if he wants to stay at home after high school, he needs to be a professional board game player with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he needs to go get a job at yeah. my favorite game store <laughs> so I can go. get a discount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to stay at home, that's yeah. It, yeah. So. But what what about you? Any notable things? So um, actually, it's it's funny because your thing sort of aligns with mine to some degree, and that's that. Um, and and I think this is huge for me. Uh, this happened just recently when you told me that you were calling your collection, and I did my first um, reduction in games. No, I take that back. I did that once when I threw out a Tetris game because <laughs> it was garbage. 
<laughs> I pitched it in the trash and I didn't look back. Um, Cause yeah, it was this like goofy Tetris game where the pieces would get stuck when you drop them down. And it's just like, I'm like, no garbage. Yeah. But, but anyway, uh, it's the first time that I've literally done any reduction in my game collection in oh, wow. like 12, 13 years. Um, yeah. I basically kept everything, um, you know, thinking in my head, like at some point I have to do something. And um, I went down quite a bit. I, I'd say I went down um, at, at least a hundred games, maybe close. I mean, I have no idea, but I am determined to keep cycling through my collection every couple of weeks and your your thoughts about games change like you'll have a game and it's special to you for some reason right like you know either like the theme you like the design or you like this you like that right and you're like you know i'm i'm not going to get rid of this game i mean there there are some games that are like you know I'm never getting rid of this game for one reason or another. Then there's other ones that are good games or there's games that, you know, you've been meaning to play and you keep it because you want to play it. And then there's just games where it's like, why the heck did I buy this? And for me, a lot of those games were games that I bought on special on Amazon or, you know, that were clearance sections because, you know, getting a $5 game is worth it. But, in the end it's a five dollar game because nobody likes it or nobody wants it and then i would usually like go on bgg and go through the reviews and somebody would say yeah this is a pretty decent game but you know i can say this is a pretty decent game about a game i really don't want to play it again ever anyway so so i i need to get my storage under control i i need to get games off of the floor you know, in front of shelves and um, just keep the stuff that that really kind of matters. And, um, you know, I had thought about like that I would go through this process of every game that I want to get rid of, especially if it's one that, you know, I really haven't played a whole lot. I'll play it at least once and then judge the game, whether it should stay or go. It's like I, I'm beyond that point now. I'm like, you know you know this game here i bought it because it was an impulse i really have no interest in it i don't know why i bought it well i know why i bought it but uh it's just it it just needs to go because i've got so much better stuff than that one and uh right and yeah so uh that's a huge thing for me very like really um uh, big for me and I'm kind of proud that I did it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I've, I actually went through and then, um, uh, I, I made a second stack. So what I'm, what I'm eventually thinking of doing is getting it to the point of where I have a certain area dedicated to all the keepers. So these are the ones okay. that are definitely staying and then having, let's say, like a shelf devoted to games on the fringe, just to make it <laughs> kind of like easier, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then maybe have like a new section where it's games that are new that I got that you know have yet to be judged. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so th- that that's a huge thing for me. And then um, uh, another thing that I just want to mention real quick is that i mean over the years i've pared down the the games that i get uh, a lot and one thing that's been happening a lot this year is there's a lo- couple of local game stores that i go to and actually well like twofold and th- this has to do with acquisition of games so you know, the Kickstarter stuff's always a problem <laughs> to some degree because yeah. it's like I wind up backing certain things uh, for, for various reasons. But, they're, you know, the online stores, I, I stopped looking at them 
like once in a while, I'll scroll through Miniature Market because that's the only one that I usually ever really go through because the other ones, they just take too long to get here. It's like if I order from Miniature Market, I can usually get a game in two days. Whereas if I order from yeah. Cool Stuff, which I thought I heard that they're not doing games anymore or something like that. They're changing to Magic or something. But anyway, besides Uh-oh. point. But it, it, going Gamera? through Cool Stuff or some of the others, it would just take a couple of days. And it's like... I want more instant gratification than getting game in a week. Don't know if Rob's because if I wait a week, then maybe I don't want it anymore. But anyway, uh, I have now two game stores um, in the area that I hit, and a good portion of the year when I walk in there, I browse through there. You know, I check out all the stuff. They got so many games. And more often than not, I would walk out empty handed, which I'm kind of proud of myself because in the past, every single time I like I would walk in there, even if I didn't like really want anything, I'd find something. And granted, you know, I'd usually like pick little stuff, um, you know, like the twenty dollar games or you know, just like smaller games. And um, but that led to my problem that I'm fixing with the culling of where I have all these games that are sort of okay. And it's like, I didn't necessarily like really want them, but I got them and I need to fix that. So, so that's my two main things notable from this year is I've had a change in myself to minimize my acquisition disorder (laughs) of games and also to get this collection under control because it need it needs to be because part of the problem too is when your collection is too big it's like you can't find stuff you're like where the heck is this game and you're like looking for 20 minutes and especially like my calax so i've got like games sideways and then i've got a box in front so i'm always like tipping the front box forward so i can see what's behind it then go to the next one tip forward look if you if you've got the, a game in the front, you do the same thing, I'm sure, Mark. Go ahead and end it when you're ready. But um, but yeah, that's 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 my stuff. The notable there. stuff from uh, from this year. So big uh, big stuff for me in some ways. Hopefully, we come back up quickly. So Mark is offline. That's not a good thing. So <laughs> I've been talking for a while. Um, we can see if Mark sure. comes back on. But uh, I guess I'll close it out here. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. This has uh, been uh, episode 63, the best of 2023. The best games of 2023. <sighs> Uh, that Mark and I covered. We talked about some other stuff that was notable uh, from 2023. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you all in 2024. Hope you have a great new year and look forward to uh, talking to you guys in the next show in two weeks. All right. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) 